work, check out our website and email us. I know I don't need to tell anybody here um, that voting is important, um, but this is, this is a poem I wrote called Waving a Palm for Emily, a young voter, after reading a newspaper article last fall, and um, the poem tells the story. She waits in line five and a half hours to see the president rally a cheering crowd of 17,000 at the UW-Madison on a sunny fall afternoon turned wet and gray. Says she wouldn't remember at 40 that accounting class she missed anyway. We'll always remember being crammed into Library Mall, one of the lucky, another 10,000 turned away. Then tells the reporter, no, it's too much trouble to vote. Dear Miss Lawless, her real name, before it's too late, stop and reconsider. So little that's important will ever be announced with palms and trumpets. And this is called, Our Middle Class Aspirations Are Killing Me. Once a month, I confront the deficit spending we employ to get from one side of the year to another. The chasm of summer, husband's unpaid vacation. What we each year take a running, shut-eyed leap to arrive on the other side of, come fall, with a collection of debt, nine months deep at least, to catch up on before the cycle repeats, repeats, repeats. College for three, shrinking savings, growing worry. I don't know how people who own cars do it, have come to believe our house is also a bill of goods. And we actually don't own a car, and I'm, I'm, I'm really reconsidering the house thing at this point. I'm alternately employed in the arts. I say alternately because um, I work all the time and really don't make any money at all. Um, most of what I do is for free and volunteer, as m many arts workers um, are. And my husband's um, job as a public employee helps support what I do. Um, so it's, it's doing double duty there as well as, as at his workplace. Um, I don't really care that I don't make that money. And in, in some ways, I think it's really important that we have this kind of alternate moneyless system that's, that's happening because money can't um, measure the worth of what we do. Um, yeah, yeah, but I do, <laughs> but I do wish that there was a wider understanding and socially about the value of the arts and, and what people like myself and all, all the other people who are out there working for the arts do. And this is a poem I wrote after being at um, the Brat Fest several years ago, um, I often find myself <laughs> fundraising in these awful kind of situations. And this is part of a series that I call the Arts in America. Memorial Day weekend, the so-called start of summer, forget about remembering, and I am working more hours than I want at the world's largest Brat Fest, corporate charity event that pays out $8 per hour to participating nonprofits, all of whose volunteers are probably thinking similar thoughts right now about how there's got to be a better way to fund the arts than grilling greasy sausage for four days straight in a damp, still chill that turns hot, then becomes a violent thunderstorm. Listening all the while to two stages of ear-piercing blues rap rock Wiping before the rain begins, the dust off cheap eats, the mud from stinging eyes. And I'll read just one more. Um, <laughs> one more. Um, the last three years, my family has celebrated Christmas without consumption. So we have a fun time together, we play games. Um, we um, hang out, maybe we watch some movies, um, but we don't buy anything. 
anymore. And we've done that for three years. And we thought we'd try it for one year and see if it worked. And then we thought, you know, okay, we're really damaging our children forever. But the next year came around and we said, okay, do you guys want a Christmas tree this year? You know, we could buy one. We could get gifts again. Or, and they were like, no, no, you know, we love decorating the ficus tree and we don't want anything. So that's what we do. It's relaxing. It's great. And um, I keep talking to my friends about this, and they say, how do you do that? I'd love to do that. It's so stressful at the holidays. So this is a kind of a Dear John letter that I wrote to Christmas to help my friends write off what they do at Christmas. Dear Christmas, you're just a once-a-year date, not a relationship, not a religion. You used to make my face flush with your sparkly lights, your shiny glass hanging from every branch, your promise of snow, every cracked black patch, every unwashed dish, each unburied bone covered, made fresh. How I trusted, how I tried to please you, filling my kitchen with the smell of baking bread and cake, cinnamon hanging like velvet bows over well-ordered cabinet cups and plates, over new mopped gleaming floors and just wiped tile. Even the flower stayed in its place, sifted into new silver bowls. I cooked, I cleaned, I baked, I planned and shopped, I dusted, mended, hung green sweat and needles before they hit the ground. I sewed, wrote cards to everyone I'd ever known, penned personal notes inside, like poems. It wasn't easy, Christmas. Money was tight. I worked hard to make you love me back. Lost sleep, gained weight, worried myself to death, and why? You never heard a single sigh, never said thank you, never meant a word you said. Don't try to call or write. We're through, Christmas. I'm breaking up with you. Thanks. <laughs>